So what's the question you always hear this time of year? Are you ready for Christmas? 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 Well, you know, 2020, as you know, has been quite a year. So Christmas this year will be a little different, to say the least. So we're going to talk about a virus in this Christmas season. And it might not be the virus that you actually are thinking about right now. There's another one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Kingdom Speak with Pastor Daniel McKillop. What's better than one virus? <laughs> Two. Two are better than one? Yes. Well, that, yes. Yes. Very pertinent. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready for Christmas? Everybody says that. This year, it's... Uh, are you ready for... Sleigh bells ring. Yeah. Hey, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. Get a little, uh, there it is. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Yes. The it's magic the, of Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Gather around the fireplace. You know what has been incredible for us? Now we're recording this and who knows what it'll be. Three weeks from now, that's the danger of recording stuff ahead. But right now I could mow my lawn. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Green grass in December. So those bells. For a Canadian is a pretty good deal. I love the sound of those bells. How uh, how long are we keeping those going? You didn't pull the 10-hour loop on that, It's a 10-hour loop, so oh. we're going for a while. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's fading. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> like something to replace that bell. We'll be back with the bells later for the praise break, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I told you we were going to talk about a virus on Kingdom Speak, it's a big fat elephant that you would probably assume we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah. As if it's the only virus that has ever existed, you know? For our generation, Mm -hmm. we think it's the baddest thing ever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's happened before. Sure has. So I'm not going through the worst thing that humanity has ever been through. Not in the scope of humanity, no. But it sorry feels... To, sorry to burst your victim bubble there, pal. I wanted to know that I was I had it worse than anyone else in the world. Well, he was getting ready to drop a book on I Survived. Yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we, we may read it. Most likely to be crushed. By the worst virus. <laughs> and I have survived. You have survived. Well, till now. Yeah. Till now, till the recording of this mm. episode. You yeah. at least need a sticker or something. Yeah. You survived. Yeah. So what do you think, Pastor? What, uh, where's your so head at today? So we're, we're, we're locked down again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, when this comes out, hopefully we'll be viewing this in our review mirror. I will give you an amen. Can I get a amen? Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. So we're having, just for the record's sake, um, we are having church with 50 people, mm. max, mm. per gathering. Mm-hmm. Mm. So the majority of our congregation is joining mm-hmm. virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so I heard I heard one of our one of our um, health officials mm-hmm. in in their daily little updates saying, you know, if everybody behaves well, we might give you Christmas back. Yeah, right. I'm like, I don't remember giving you my Christmas. Yeah, who who said you could have my? Are you the Grinch? Yeah, that's about it, right? <laughs> I don't remember someone asking me if they could have my Christmas. So we're in single household bubbles. Mm. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're getting me down, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Hold on. <laughs> it gets much better. Hey, have you seen the new Kingdom Speak mugs just before we move on? These mugs. Hey, that will, that'll cheer up anybody. Even Make when you're alone, shot. drinking this, out of a cup like this helps. If you haven't participated yet, Now's your chance. Jump on social media. Find our posts about these mugs. Yeah. We're giving one away every week. Like, that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. These these are virus-killing mugs. Yep. 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 (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, you have the floor. So let's look at history. All right. Where have we been before? Have we, have we been here before? What comes to mind? I would dare say, yeah. Yeah. There's been a you few... Know, uh, you know, I, I, at our Remembrance Day, Veterans Day, for those of you that um, are our American audience, um, November the 11th, I had this conversation with with uh, the one of the representatives from the Legion, Tom mm-hmm. Eagles, mm-hmm. and he mentioned, you know, we're going to go ahead and have this ceremony because how do you feel the veterans from, you know, that stormed Normandy Beach yeah. on D-Day <laughs> yeah. would feel about us fleeing in terror mm. uh, from this virus? Mm-hmm. So that's why they decided to continue with the celebration. Um, so there's been worse things, worse atrocities mm-hmm. that's happened in, in humanity. And uh, I, I think one that would immediately come to mind would be the bubonic plague. Mm. Um, pretty pretty horrific. Yeah. They estimate, what, one-third mm-hmm. of the world's population died? That's pretty, pretty bad, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty significant deal. Um, so every once in a while, it's good to just zoom out. Yes, I agree. And and realize this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened to us. This is not, and I, I want to be clear on this. Mm-hmm. This is not a slight in any way. By undoubtedly, there being members of our audience that have been. Very affected, for sure. Oh, absolutely right. Yes, that's right. By this virus, yes. So for you, it doesn't get any worse than. Oh that. yeah, you lose a loved one; it's the worst right. time yeah. of your life, definitely. So Christmas for you mm-hmm. this year is 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 going to be mm-hmm. a game changer. Um, and so first and foremost, we want you to know we're praying for you because that's yes, sir. That's uh. A horrible, it's a terrible thing. A horrible thing, and I believe God comforts those He He can help fill that vacancy for sure. So for you, it doesn't get any worse than. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Dad's not going to be at the table this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mom, mm-hmm. we're we're going to be getting together next week and having some form mm-hmm. of celebration, family time. But it'll never be the same. No. So for you, 2020 and COVID-19 has has literally wreaked havoc on the landscape of your life. But when we zoom out on the totality of mm-hmm. the situation, we've been through worse. Yes. Yeah. And so I can speak for for my exposure. Okay. We've been blessed not to have anybody directly affected by COVID-19 in our congregation. Yeah, we're super yeah. fortunate. Super fortunate. God's, God. God's been good to Thank us. God. In fact, our, our entire province has had, as today, as of recording, which uh, is recording on December the 2nd. So, what is it, 540-some cases or something like that, give or take? Mm, I know that today is not December the 2nd. It's not December second. What is it? This is, is it back to that fraction discussion. We oh had. come on! Okay, the third. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's a minor point, but it is okay. December third today, folks. Give or take a day. <laughs> okay, it's been a rough year. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you took us back. All you right. were trying to take another day off, twenty twenty. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to give it one more day to get better. Yeah. So, you sense one of two things, and we've already highlighted one. So let's say three things. Mm-hmm. You either have people who are grieving because of the direct effect or because we've not had anybody directly impacted in our congregation. Our province has only had seven deaths in the whole province. Mm-hmm. That you have people that either are in the camp that they are scared senseless. Mm-hmm. They're afraid of this yeah. thing, driven by fear. Or you have the other side of it, who is so frustrated because now we're back in lockdown. We're dealing with restrictions. I can't 
go get a haircut in Grand Falls. Yeah, you're looking kind of shaggy. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. there's my excuse, okay? Thank God I'm still shaving. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the impact of this on people is either grief because you've been mm-hmm. affected mm-hmm. drastically by this, or fear that you will be right. impacted drastically right. by it, or frustration because you're being held mm-hmm. hostage by something that's not impacting you. And so every every one every citizen really finds themselves mm-hmm. in in one of those camps, and we need to really zoom out. That's right. And get some perspective on this and then note, you know what? There may be something bigger going on than just the origination of this mm-hmm. in some oriental wet market somewhere. Yeah. Um, early 1300s, you know, you, you read stories like this that, that ships would come into port mm-hmm. and when they come in, half of the of the yeah. of the crew are either dead or diseased and they're bleeding and they're mm-hmm. they're, they're sores and fever Brutal. and dying within 4 to 5 days you know you read about medical professionals doctors mm-hmm. tending the sick contracting the disease and dying before the diseased you know it was just a horrific it was a horrific um, period in human history, and it lasted for a few years before they before they got the upper hand on it. And so that was pretty bad, is what you're saying. That was pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> that sounds pretty bad. Yeah, that's that's. I haven't uh, seen that yet. I'd hate to see. I would hate to see the the pressers on that. If the folks that are doing them today were running the daily press releases, then. And they'd have been having nervous breakdown. And yeah, can I just say thank God it hasn't got that bad? Yeah. Oh. Do you guys remember? Uh, is it April when the big ship came into New York City? Yeah. And I'm sitting thinking to myself. Yeah. Okay. If it's gonna get this bad, <laughs> we're in for a ride. We are in for a ride. Like wow. And I don't think. Did they even use that ship? No, I don't think they had to. I don't think they had to. Which, again, thank God yes. for it. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. But um, we're, we're, we're outpacing history by, yeah. by quite a step. Yeah. So speaking first and foremost to those that are in the fear camp, mm-hmm. we've already spoken to those grieving. And I, I'm, I'm serious, man. I, I feel that. Yeah, it's terrible. We, we as a church know of ministries that have been lost. We know of... Of pastors and it's not that just, have lost their lives. It's not just a loss, as you know. You know, it, it impacts families being able to spend precious moments with them. Yeah, the the, the ceremonies, the celebration of life. Well, we feel it in our, in our own church, right? We've had those. We've got a congregation that that is one of our satellite mm-hmm. works, our campus in mm-hmm. in Maine, and and we haven't been able to see them since the end of March. Yeah, they're feeling that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're feeling that, yep. okay? Yeah. So, so this is not a callous statement. Right. But speaking to those that are driven by fear, mm-hmm. listen, we're going to get through this. Now, God yes. may come and take us out of here, and I, uh, that's my preference. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. But listen, if he doesn't, I got some good news. Yeah. Like 99% of you mm. are going to be here next year at this time. We're going to be all right. We're going to make it. If you're not here next year at this time, it won't be because of COVID-19. So how many things, I asked someone this the other day that I was speaking to that was struggling with fear. I said, I want, I want to ask you to stop and think about this for a moment. How many things do you do a day that have way less mm-hmm. than 98 to 99% chance of being successful, safe, mm-hmm. How many things do you do? You jump in a car and you drive down the road, and I don't know what the percentages are. They're a whole lot less than 99%. Well, depending on who's driving, the percentages change, <laughs> yes. I will say that. 
Seventy-seven percent of drivers have been in an, at least one accident. All right, seventy-seven percent. Producer Randy's a pretty bad driver. Have you ever driven with him? Yeah, he's pretty bad. Yeah. How many accidents have I had, brother Derek? I don't know. I've lost count. Oh, Easy. <laughs> a big Ooh. fat zero. Oh. <laughs> Stay tuned, audience. An accident. And Stay. It, Tuned. An accident and a near-death experience are two different yes, things. true. Because I can feel like I almost died and no accident actually happened. Yeah, and still don't have to paint the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the majority of us are going to survive this thing. Mm -hmm. So there's some good Christmas cheer for you. That's right. Lift up your head. It's going to be okay. For the camp of us that are frustrated, um, it's not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to hear that, don't we? Um, I have I have concerns about how this is going to affect, and this is what we're going to talk about. What, and boy, do I hate using this phrase, new normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know what the new normal is going to look like. Mm -hmm. But right about now, we're so frustrated with our present situation that we would accept any hint of normalcy, regardless yeah. of... The, the degree of newness that it has. So, but ultimately we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to be okay. We're going to pull through this. The thing that, that sticks out mm -hmm. is this black death came and went Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. it, it comes and goes mm -hmm. pandemics, for all intents and purposes, come and go. Yeah, that's right. Okay. It's not the first one. Right. But there's lasting impact by a, uh, I don't know any other way to say it than a, a sub virus that kind of remains constant throughout Sorry. all of the coming and going of the medically defined viruses mm -hmm. of history. There's one that as you study these pandemics mm -hmm. remains constant. And I submit to you, it's way more deadly mm -hmm. and its impact is way broader than just the time frame of awaiting herd immunity or mm -hmm. vaccinations right. Right. of the present generations. And we're going to talk about that next episode. Concern. Okay. Have a good day, guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right. Merry uh, Christmas, everyone. <laughs> we'll talk to you in the new year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah! 2021. Got him. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Don't you love doing that? Where's your closing music? Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there is a price with surviving mm -hmm. the medical mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah. If I just may throw The this. medical aspect of the pandemic. If I can throw this in. This, this is very common even in the medical world where once you have something happen to you, you become a stroke survivor. And yeah, everything and that's, you do, that's the badge you wear from that moment Everything on. you do after that, you're not a human anymore that had a stroke. You're a stroke survivor. Very good. So it changes everything about your life. Okay, 911 is the same type of deal. Definitely, yes. Okay, we lost 3,000-ish mm -hmm. precious souls mm -hmm. that day. But now the survivors are bearing a greater toll mm -hmm. of impact from that day. So surviving is not cheaper than being lost in it. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes. The, 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 the cost of surviving a significant event like this. Yeah. The mental trauma associated oh, with 9 11. Psychological. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know from the first responder perspective, all even of, medical, all of the damages that happened to those rescuers. Totally. Right. Totally. So there's probably more of them that have died since. Right. Right. And even the they're day still of. lobbying for Congress, you know, it. to yeah. support yeah. first responders Absolutely. and support mm -hmm. everybody that was there and breathed in all of that stuff because they're still dying. Right, right. Because in the process of rescuing people in the event, a lot of people were harmed. So there you've said it. The process of surviving the event, Proves costlier right? mm -hmm. it's than, exactly it. than, mm. than being consumed by the event. Right. Like you, nobody in their right mind looking back now 
would run down that street. I'm talking as a first responder. The first thing I would be doing is N95 respirator, you know, all, masks? Are you saying masks? Yeah, well, we wore them before this, just oh, so everyone you, knows. Oh, yeah, this is not okay. a new fad. Okay. But you see the pictures of those guys running down the streets toward the buildings, and their faces are covered with this ash. And For sure. Nobody would even think of doing that, but because they were in that environment at that time, they did crazy stuff right. to try to help people. Right. And now they're well, it's survival. It. And now right. they're paying for it. Right, right. Okay? It's no different. You can cherry pick any one of these events in history and what we've just said mm-hmm. emerges. And so the, the, this sub subculture mm-hmm. viral thing that we're talking about that proves way deadlier yep. is highlighted. And I want to, I want to, I want to reference it from an article that I read talking about the bubonic plague, black death, Rather than, and I'm quoting, rather than encourage, I think this is from Christianity Today, rather than encourage mutual aid, the plague's deadliness drove people from one another. Mm -hmm. One Sicilian friar reported, magistrates and notaries refused to come and make the wills of the dying. And worse, even the priests did not come to hear their confessions. In one account called the Decameron, the author said, one man shunned another. Kinsfolk held aloof. Brother was forsaken Mm -hmm. by brother. Oftentimes husband by wife. Nay, what is more and scarcely to be believed. Fathers and mothers were found to abandon their own children to their fate. Un." tended unvisited as if they had been strangers. Wow. Stuff that you would never do. The moral decay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that began in the midst of that pandemic of black death far supersedes the atrocity of the human toll. So, the virus that we're talking about affects the human soul. Mm-hmm. That's right. It affects the human soul. And so he goes on to say, in many cases, the mark that the bubonic plague left looked up upon the human soul, I'm inserting that, looked as hideous as the symptoms of the black death itself. Yeah. Yeah. Parents abandoning children? just so that they can survive. Yeah. Outside of that context, you would never, ever do that. Never. Yeah. And suffice it to say, within the context, you shouldn't do it. Right. That's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Okay. That's a virus, baby. Mm. That's a virus that is way worse than black death. Mm -hmm. Way worse than black death. Wow. You and I are seeing this. This virus was present during the bubonic plague and they never got it under control. It was evident during the Spanish flu and they never got it under control. Mm -hmm. And it's evident in 2020 and it's still emerging. The vaccinations for this have yet to come out. Mm -hmm. The human condition is to isolate now we're reading things people get this we're reading things like this i love my aging parents too much Mm -hmm. to go visit them (laughs) did i just read you Did, did you just retweet that you actually believe that yeah (laughs) we have got loved ones that are in isolation from their own family. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see it now. It's slowly emerging slowly, Mm -hmm. but, but, but a lot of this stuff, we read, we read this about the bubonic plague. Now you couldn't read it when it, when the, when the corpses were piling up, history will reveal the absolute, the absolute atrocities of how, 
the elderly were abandoned during this time and were not allowed to interact with their family. Yeah, it's. I'm a, just going to go on record and saying history will prove what I just said to be right. 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 Oh yeah, I think that, it's already out there. That's, yep. that's, I think it's already out there. When you're abandoning someone who is struggling with the onset onset of dementia, they don't understand why all of a sudden the only two people in the world that they know mm. all of a sudden quit coming to see them. That's right. And those two people are tweeting that they love that person too much to go see them. Mm. Now, not everybody feels this way. Right. Remember, uh, yeah. we've got yeah, two camps here. We got fear and frustrated. That's right. We, I, I know that there's people in our congregation that are frustrated that they can't, they can't get mm-hmm. to their aging loved ones. Right. Who are in a senior's home. Right. And I'm just telling you, that's an atrocity on an evil level. You see pictures of, you know, greeting grandma through the glass. It's just, it's <sighs> awful. Have you seen these weird things that they're coming up with? <laughs> these plastic curtains with armholes mm. and and pe- like, are we really doing this right now? There's got to be a better way. Now, if I have COVID, I don't want to give it to my 84 year old grandmother. For sure, right? I'm not. We're not. I don't think. I don't think I'm hearing you say that. Either. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Right. I'm not wanting to nominate anybody to be the super spreader. But there's got to be. There's got to be a way that I can still say hi to grandma. In our quest to minimize the impact of COVID-19 on the human family, Mm -hmm. we cannot lose the human soul in that process. That's it. Exactly. That's it. And I'm sorry, but governments don't have soul. Nope. Public health doesn't have soul. And I appreciate, I mean, they're trying to get their, their hands around what's going on. So... I'm stretching here to say that I'll I, I I give you that that flexibility that mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to give you that, but man, somewhere somebody has to come to the table, so to speak, and say the the atrocities. Okay, I'm sure, and and by the time this comes out in a few weeks, there probably will be even more. Um, facts to substantiate Mm -hmm. what we're talking about japan Mm -hmm. i'm sure the majority of our listeners have seen or will have seen that article by the time this comes out they lost more people last month to suicide Mm -hmm. right than they have lost all year to COVID 19 yep does that not at some point does someone go okay we've got a problem Mm -hmm. and it's bigger than this virus That's right. yep. that was, is affecting our lungs and our breathing capacity. It's like you say, it, it was there before this, and now we're just making it worse. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I've known, I, I know of families that are experiencing the frustration of having a loved one who is in a hospital right now struggling with COVID-19 or recovering from it, mm. and they still can't be. Mm. Okay. I understand that 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 there needs to be isolation mm. to a point, but man, after this individual has been the one that I'm referring to has been in the hospital for months, mm-hmm. months. Do you know that our local, our local uh, seniors' home for the four, three three or four days? I just heard this this week for the three or four days over Christmas, no family will be permitted within. None. But I can go now? Like, you can go now, but you can't go then. And part of the reason then, I'm not I'm not throwing stones at the staff. Mm-hmm. It's a staffing issue, and they just, the person that takes care of it wants their Christmas. Well, they're yep. entitled to their Christmas. Yep. So, so instead of coming up with an alternative plan, we are going to have grandma for three days over Christmas eating turkey by herself. We'll just cancel everything. <laughs> You know, it's frustrating for healthcare practitioners too. It's got to be. Oh, it's got to be. Oh, you can't even imagine it's gotta because be. they're not making the decision either. And right, you're sitting there saying, "Wow, right. I just I'm the Grinch for all these people." Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. The Grinch. So at some point, you know, and and, and I just feel like we got to push back here a little bit. It's it's this. You got to, you've got to. Uh, you know, you read comments like this by non-church-going people. 
Why do you want to go to church? What's it a big deal? God's everywhere. God's omnipresent. You don't have to go to church to get to God. I disagree. <laughs> you mean God's not everywhere? God's in hell, but I don't plan on going there. <laughs> I don't know if you can sense that I'm in the more frustrated category today <laughs> than the fearful category. <laughs> I see a lot of fear at the yeah. table. Yeah. yeah. I look for manifestations of God. Yep. Okay. You still go to a grocery store, but there's food running all around your house. If you live in New Brunswick, I had six deer on my lawn this morning. What do I need to go to the grocery store for then? When you start bootlegging your food and bootlegging your beer, I'll bootleg the gospel. Well, well there we have it. But until then, that's not casting all protocols away. That is not oh, thumbing your nose at trying to be respectful. But that's come right. on yep. to insinuate that an individual, a human being, can get the same experience from a digital communication that they can get from a human-to-human -human interaction is ludicrous. FaceTime with Nan is not the same way, same thing as sitting down and having Christmas dinner with her. Well, I got a question. Okay, just a question. Okay. If if that is the case, then why are there stadiums with 100,000 seats in them? Oh, they're not going to have that no more. We're shutting those down. Okay. Yeah, we're going to shut those down. Yeah. I'll eat my necktie when that happens. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> You've been my on neck, this little. You my still, necktie. You've been you, on this little. I'll eat my. You thing got lately. Some, You still have some eating to do. <laughs> I didn't even put it on, but I have a Taylor's tartan necktie here. Okay, come on now. If they shut down one football stadium in Murica, <laughs> I'll eat this necktie on a podcast. All right, I'll do it. Okay. There it is. There you go. Oh, no, we got, we got you, some phone you calls guys to heard make. It. You guys heard it. You're out there. Does anybody in our podcast audience know of a football stadium that's being demolished? Hey, that's not what that, I oh, said. No, 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 no. You're done. Mute his mic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will, we'll give you a, a mug if you can point us to you don't get a to stadium do the that I do has the been <laughs> demolished or is in the process of being demolished. Yes. Yeah, you're casting the net wider here. Yeah. yeah. I'll even throw my mug in the mix. Yeah. So two mugs. So the deadly virus, brother Casista, mm -hmm. is this virus of isolation, humanity withdrawing from humanity. Mm -hmm. That's it, isn't it? Husbands withdrawing from wives. Really? Like we, we, we hear stories of this where traveling salesmen that have to go in and out of areas that have... Uh, different thresholds of, you know, yep. we're in the orange zone and I don't live in a zone that's in the orange zone. And so they come home and their wives want them to sleep in the basement and want them to whatever. She probably and, made them and sleep maybe, in the basement. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's normal yeah. for the majority of you. But, uh, okay. <laughs> and at some point we have to go, really? Have we just lost our mind? Has, has, has everybody just lost our mind? We're doing this over something that has a 99% yeah. survival rate. I'm not saying that someone dying from, I'm not being callous. I'm just telling you that we don't need to be so driven by this that we begin ignoring mm -hmm. the erosion of the human soul while we're trying to save quote unquote humanity in the process. Now, just for the what it's worth department. Quarantining is biblical. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. It's biblical. Hmm. Leviticus chapter 13. All right. Well, look at that. You get it written right in your notes. I do. Leviticus 13, 44. Yeah. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head, and the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. Yep. And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip. And he sh is that a, is that a mask? That's not a moustache. <laughs> and he shall cry, unclean, unclean. 
That is literally a second covering over his. his, his it's a fabric. Mm-hmm. He's got it. It's not hair. Mm-hmm. For all you bald men out there, you're okay. Okay. So literally, the whole point being this: that sometimes isolation, yeah, is in order. It's even biblical. That's right. We've Put already said it. We're not wanting to set up some super spreader event. No. I, I, if there's anything that I despise about the attitude and the climate of our day, it's this: that if you express an opinion contrary to the beating, fear mongering mm. of of medical professionals and scientists and all of this stuff right now, and you just go, like, maybe there's a little good news in this, then then people automatically want to put you as, you, you just want to be some super spreading <laughs> viral individual. That's not the point. The Bible says if you got leprosy, there's a special spot outside the camp for you. You need to get that checked. And until then, you need to, Put something over your face mm-hmm. and holler an unclean. So, as crazy as this seems, being quarantined for a period of time, if you're infected, seems to be biblical. Mm-hmm. Even covering your face, mm-hmm. if you're infected. Mm-hmm. But it's like the presentation here that leaves, we, we, we have no biblical um, parallel for, is we're, we're in a dispensation now where we're quarantining the healthy. Hey, everybody, that's right. And we're masking the healthy. Hmm. And we're taking some moral high ground to say that we love everybody around us enough to do this. When the reality is, is we're isolating people in the process and I'm sorry, you'll never get me to agree that isolating anybody is an expression of love. The human condition requires the, the human the human uh, emotion, mm-hmm. the mental health of humanity. It demands community, man. We're not made to thrive on our own. It was God himself who looked at Adam, who is the perfection of the image of God. And he said, it's not good for man to be alone. We don't don't need any other substantiation than that. It's not good for man to be alone. That man, God could have made him however he wanted to make him. He could have made him with the ability to be fruitful and multiply within himself. But humanity cannot be productive, Mm -hmm. cannot be fruitful with themselves in isolation. Impossible. Impossible. It requires intimate interaction with other human beings to be fruitful and, and to multiply. That's right. And I would even say to have dominion. You can't get it by yourself. Interesting, yeah. It requires the interaction of others. That's right. I think right now is a good chance to do a praise break and say we need others to interact with Kingdom Speak. We can't be productive without you. (laughs) Leave us a review. (laughs) We need you and you need us. That's the best news. You need us. (laughs) If you haven't subscribed... What are you waiting for? It's Christmas time. No greater gift you could give to us than a subscription and a bell on YouTube or a subscription on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you're listening to us. Give the gift of Kingdom Speak this Christmas. Yes. And share us with someone. Throw us five stars. Come on. Just throw it to us and say something nice about producer Randy. I know. Well, I know. Here we go. It's Christmas. It's Christmas, guys. The bells are back. He's got a mic. He's coming. He's been complaining that he doesn't have... Merry Christmas. You got a mic. He's been complaining that he doesn't have a tablecloth. <laughs> yeah, that's the latest. Yeah. He gets a mic. Now he wants a tablecloth? Like, really? <laughs> I mean, this... Really? Garb I think of one of the cables. forest boys predicted that this was going to be the next step. Yep. Way back in the unpacking yep. of the mic. Yep. 
and I'm on it. Still haven't been approved, so, but I'm on it. Yeah. Shout out to the forest. Okay. All right, there go the bells. They're back. Yes. Just like Adam needs Eve, we need you. Oh, did not sound good. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Eve for every Adam. Oh, mm. I'm weeping. To our Kingdom Speak audience, you are our rib. <laughs> <laughs> You're the missing rib. <laughs> We're not a full rack without you. Okay. What did Solomon have to say about this? He said, Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone. There's not a second. Yeah. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother. Yea, is the, yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also it's, vanity. It's, it's other people that bring value to life. So he's working and he's, and he's gaining wealth, if you will. He's a miser. Mm -hmm. But he's still, his eyes are never full. He's not satisfied. Why? Because it requires true value. Comes from, I got mouths to feed. Yeah. I, I've, I've, got, I've got purpose. Somebody's depending on me. The last thing we need is the virus that emerged during the Black Death. Mm hmm Spanish flu. And we got to deal with this virus, man. It's a deadly thing. That's right. We need each other. That's right. We really do. Read on. Verse 9, two are better than one. Well, there you go. It's better. There you go. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm. For if they fall. Well, yeah. it's a terrible thing to fall when you're by yourself. If you fall, who yeah. are you going to call? Who's going to... Right. Mm -hmm. Who's going who's gonna to pick you up? Mm-hmm. If you fall to, it's just simple. I don't care if you read it in the Greek, if you read it in the Hebrew. All you pointy heads. Yeah. The amplified. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Put it in on whatever translation you want it. Two are better than one. That's just the way it is. God said it's not good to be by yourself. Okay. Read. For he hath not one another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. How can one be warm alone? Yeah. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. broken. There you go. There you go. So there's degrees of victory. There's degrees of dominion, productivity, fruitfulness, multiplying. All of that stuff that is established in Genesis 1 when God created Adam, gave him a help meet by the name of Eve, is once again being reiterated, underscored, bolded two's just better than one two's better than one a threefold cord is not easily broken the fabric of our society is being stretched because we're unraveling cord we're, we're unraveling cords we're mm -hmm. strands right that's why it's being tested people snapping just snapping in the grocery aisle because you're walking up the arrows instead of down the arrows. You rebel. Right? We've seen it. People being arrested because they're not wearing a mask. Mm. And they have a medical condition. Mm. Really? Humanity is losing the, 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 the elasticity that mm. comes from the multiplicity of strands. It's, it's, and we just, we're losing the toleration. We're losing it. I am not nearly as effective by myself as I am with somebody else. If one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Yeah. Come on, the math don't make sense. Yeah. But two individuals working together are worth ten times as much, according to the Word of God, as two individuals in isolation. That's right. So what we've got to make sure does not happen to us on an individual level, on a family level, on a communal level, on a church level, is we've got to recognize there is a virus that's going to get a hold of us. Mm. I may never be affected by COVID-19. I may never have to fight it off, struggle with the fever, struggle with anything. But I will have to fight the virus of isolation. 
Everyone will. Because whether it's by the by reason of what is going on around us, the fear, the frustration, whatever it is, we 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 are either either being isolated by mandation or being mandated mm-hmm. or being isolated by fear. Mm-hmm. And so we've got a group of people that I love dearly that are having to worship God alone. Now listen, there's value to periodically being alone. Mm -hmm. There is. Daniel had visions when he was alone. Jesus, he would steal away and get alone. Jacob wrestled alone across the brook Jabbok. There are things that God has to change in you that sometimes a corporate setting is not where the adjustment needs to happen. It's one-on-one. You wrestling it out. Jesus would go to the mountaintop. Jesus would go to the garden to pray. Jesus would steal away to get alone. But all of those things were momentary. All of those things were for a short period of time. They weren't for months. At best, they were for days. Jesus, while he's on the cross, expresses aloneness entirely differently. He has got a thief on either side. Mm-hmm. He has got people all gathered around the base of the cross. And he says, hmm My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We must never confuse the value of being alone with the danger of isolation. Exactly right. That's right. I was going to tell you, even Jesus couldn't handle being isolated. Even Jesus couldn't handle abandonment, being forsaken. He died. He couldn't handle it. There is a danger for the child of God to start thinking that, do you know what? I haven't been in church for a little bit. I I, I think me and my Bible and the odd live stream, we, we... we might, be able to, we might be able to make this work. Dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. You, nobody, nobody is the body of Christ. Nobody is single-handedly yeah. the body of Christ. Yeah. It takes members. Every one of us are members in particular. And if you isolate yourself from the body, you become an amputee. And there's yeah. just there's no way to survive. Yeah. You're outside of the body. No blood flow. <laughs> yeah. You're not there anymore. Yeah. You and your Bible and couch cannot make it to heaven. Period. For a period of time. For a period of time. We're working through this. We're connecting. We're having online services. We're trying our best to work through this. This is not a long-term strategy. And it will not last forever. It will not last forever. Very good. So true, bro. The spirit of of the day is definitely isolation. The message is just continually being hammered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's hammered. I've heard people say, again, speaking specifically for New Brunswick, I can't wait till we can be a Canadian again. Mm-hmm. So true. We're not even Canadian right now. Mm-hmm. We can't travel to the rest of our own country right now. Right. Isolation. Isolation. New Brunswick will not survive if it does not re-emerge from this bunker and become part of a country again. And so it, it, it doesn't matter what aspect of, of life you're in, whether it's just being a citizen of a nation, whether it's family, or whether it's a church, we need that communal aspect. We've got to have it. We've got to have it. 
People are going to lose their mind over this and have lost their right. mind. Right. So an interesting, an interesting part of this is if Jesus couldn't handle being alone and being isolated, do, do you really think you can? <laughs> You and your cross cannot handle being alone. Who are you to think? <laughs> right. Yeah. And he felt that, and there were other people around him. Sure. So, so there's even people that that isolation can get on you when there's other people even around you. Absolutely. That emotional, you know, there's actually a thing I was reading this morning. Do you know there's actually a diagnosis called holiday depression? It's a specific depression that people get this time of year. Really? Yes. Rooted in? Rooted in just the season. People who don't want to be around family or they have family problems. And the wow. entire Christmas environment just puts escalates that all of the triggers hypertension all of the triggers. Wow. So yeah, so there's definitely there's definitely a isolation that's even in addition to the coronavirus environment of 2020 that right people sure. can feel that isolation this sure. time of right. year. Right. For sure. Okay, so the the, the conversation has to go here now then what is the driving force behind the virus? Mm -hmm. What, you know, we're, we're, we're scientifically tracing COVID-19 back to China, back to, to, to whatever. Mm -hmm. We find patient zero and we go, this is where it started. Mm -hmm. Where, where does this virus, what is the, and I, I've been saying this from the beginning of this COVID-19 pandemic, what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah. What's driving What's the spirit behind this? Mm. Okay. And I think that the word of God identifies one of the spirits or or one of the driving forces behind this. Leave me alone. Okay. That's right. And that can be found in Mark chapter one. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou uh -huh. art, the Holy One of God. Yeah. The Holy One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the Holy One. The holy how many? <laughs> yeah, the Holy Third of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. The clarion call of sin is isolation. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. alone. Just leave me alone. Just, just, just. And I've not seen anybody lose their walk with God. I've not seen anybody backslide. I've not seen anybody throw in the towel. That first, the cry wasn't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. When you would text them, they wouldn't respond. When you would invite them over, they wouldn't come. Mm -hmm. You first begin to isolate yourself from the body. Yeah. And it ultimately becomes a segregation and a complete breakdown between you and God. Isolation is driven. Listen, there's something about coming together, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. There's something about coming together that causes you to confront those areas of your life that otherwise you would never confront. Jesus' presence in that service sparked something in that devil-possessed man that said, leave me alone. You don't hear him saying that, of him saying that, the Sunday before, right? the midweek Bible study right. before, mm -hmm. but the presence of an anointed one in that service, it triggered that spirit to say, leave me alone, man. You're pushing me out. You're, you're calling me out. The safest thing to do when you're struggling with temptation, when you're struggling with inconsistencies in your life, the propensity is to pull yourself back. 
because you give yourself the pass. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is assemble yourself with the body of Christ. Yes, so true. Or else that virus will get you. It will get you. Man, I'm thinking about Adam right now. He, you know, when sin happened in the garden, they, they just took off and hid themselves, you know? Right. And who comes looking for them? Separation. Who comes looking for them? Saying, exactly. Man. Exactly. Their actions were screaming, leave us alone. Yeah. Leave us alone. Just, just, just. God still showed up looking for them. <sighs> That's how merciful God is. Yeah. God doesn't throw you out in the brush and say, lay out there for a while and suffer. <laughs> you know? But that's what we do in our humanity. We're it is. It is. This, this was the same attitude that Israel had when Moses showed up to deliver them. Mm -hmm. He started the process. Things started getting a little, a little dicey. And, he, and they're like, hey, leave us alone. <laughs> We'd rather serve the Egyptians. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> we would rather serve the Egyptians. Just, just leave us alone. That was the kind of attitude that they had. Yep. And so I think that there is, there's three things that we could wrap up with here. Moses and God have this interesting exchange at the mm -hmm. top of the mountain, 40 days, Shekinah glory. Okay. It's, 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 it's amazing. God writes him a, a note in rock and we're still living by it to this day. Okay, here's the Ten Commandments. At the bottom of the mountain, people have lost their mind. Taking off their clothes, dancing around a molten calf. God looks down and he says, Moses, I, I love this. There's so much leadership stuff in this. Yeah, very, Moses, very cool conversation. Thy people that thou brought out of Egypt yeah. Yeah. are leaving the rails, pal. I think Moses is God. hearing this saying, oh God, don't do this to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what you're doing right now. Oh no. And like right now, the whole, the, the entire nation of Israel is up for adoption at this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Hot potato. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The virus is working. Nobody wants the kids. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And God speaks to him. And says, Moses, if you would just leave me alone, leave me alone, I will consume them. Whoa. And I'll start all over with you. You don't okay? hear that very often out of God, do you? No, you don't. Here is proof. That this is proof right here that Moses didn't have an ambitious bone in his body and that Moses loved the children of Israel, although he repeatedly was frustrated by them and allowed himself to become so frustrated that he acted in a way that it kept him out of the promised land. He still came to their defense and said, God, mm -hmm. they're your people. Here's the potato back. <laughs> yes. While the music is still playing, yeah. you get it back. Yeah. They're your people. You brought them out of Egypt. And speaking of Egypt, do you want the Egyptians to be able to say, oh, this God brought them out just to consume them. Moses says, I, I can't even get my head wrapped around this. God, you need to repent. You need to change your attitude. He's feeling pretty bold at that moment, isn't he? Bro. He's going to bat for the people. It's one thing to say that to God, but God did it. Yeah. He repented of how he felt. Now listen, it is so easy to get caught up in this narrative and go, you know, why did Moses get so out of control that he threw the tablets of stone when he got to the bottom of the mountain? Do you understand the feverish pitch of the conversation with God that he just left? Pretty intense. I mean, breaking a few tables of stone pales when compared with, I'm just going to wipe them all out. Yep. Yep. Let me just throw this in here that dealing with, dealing with a exasperated 
spiritual leader in your life every once in a while? Still a lot it's better still than the alternative. Than being alone, you and God. Yeah. <laughs> you do not want to serve a God that is alone. I'm not insinuating that there's other gods. I'm just saying God minus the filter of a Moses means no more Israel. Yeah, and can I say it this way from from a saint's perspective? Be careful how you throw Moses under the bus. Yes. Because he's taken a few shots for you. Yes. You don't know the discussion that he had with Bro. God before he came to preach Sunday morning. Bro. About you. Right. All right. It's it's the discussion around the tree that's not producing, saying, look, if you just give us three more years, mm. would you let me dung around it? Okay. So Ooh. the first thing is, is even God needed somebody to keep him from overreacting. God in isolation would have killed Israel. Mm -hmm. Moses, then you read later, when the people are murmuring and complaining about the bread, and he goes, oh God, these people are yours. You're putting way too much on me. I don't know how much more of this I can handle. Right? He says, if I alone have to deal with this, then just come take my life. So, now you have a Moses who's feeling the isolation of leadership, mm -hmm. the weight of leadership, and God says, man, call out 70, take some of your anointing, put on them, share the weight of what you're carrying. That's right. Because spiritual leadership that operates in isolation becomes at the, at the bare minimums spiritually suicidal. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. it's arguable wow. when you look at Elijah that when God came and said, okay, Mr. Prophet, what are you doing in this cave all by yourself? Why are you here? I just want to die. Just, just take my life. When you, when you start isolating yourself mm -hmm. and pulling yourself back, you're open to any emotional, irrational decision. Elijah was instructed, go get an Elisha. You need to be with someone else. Two are better than one. Go get somebody that when you're following Elijah. Now listen, this is an, a man powerful enough to call fire down from heaven. Powerful enough to single-handedly deal with 450 prophets of Baal. But still can't maintain the emotional and spiritual equilibrium needed by himself. Can't do it. Can't do it. That goes corporate world too. Like people get so narcissistic, they think they can do everything themselves. Ooh. Right? And you see somebody who is power hungry, ambitious, whatever. Right. They would be right. so much more effective if they had some help. Right. Right. Absolutely. What are you doing, man? You're 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 destroying everybody around you because you won't admit you need a little help, right? right. Do you think there's a cor uh, a correlation? You know, Moses is a type of Christ, so he was the mediator between God and man, right? In that instance, yes. Just like Jesus Christ is the mediator, yes. Just like a pastor who gets a word from God is the mediator too. There's numerous examples with Moses' life, Miriam. She starts, she starts criticizing. Yeah. Aaron starts criticizing. The last thing you want at that moment is for God to honor your request to just, I just want you and me. Just you and me. Us alone. Bro, leprosy. Yes. Miriam and God. God, God, he, he just don't, he just don't play well by himself. <laughs> he plays for keeps. Okay? A, 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 a flock that doesn't have a shepherd is scattered. So flocks are not good to be alone. So I want you to see the trickle-down effect. God by himself, God in isolation, without a Moses, is a God that wipes out an entire nation of people. A Moses by himself, without help, and without God, becomes suicidal.
just take my life. At the very least, throws in the towel on ministry. Just says, I can't do it anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he ultimately lost the battle with that. He did. He allowed the frustration to get to him. It's true, right? He did. He did. Yeah. Hit the rock instead of speaking to it. And he ultimately limited how far he could go in his ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay? Isolation is that dangerous. And lastly, a flock without a without a shepherd is scattered. Pretty much covers everybody. Nobody can survive in isolation. Listen, your faith can't even survive in isolation. Faith is dead. Faith is dead. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Everybody needs somebody. Again, as we're probably wrapping up soon, it's probably important to remind everyone that, you know, this time of year, it's important to reach out to people. It is. It's imperative that we reach out to people and say, hey, man, how you doing? doesn't take much. Someone in your congregation that doesn't have family. Mm. Mm. Someone in your community that doesn't have family. I have said this repeatedly. Do not eat Christmas dinner alone. Mm. If you're within driving distance of my home, you get to my home. Buying somebody a coffee is, that can be it for somebody. It can. Just reaching out. Mm. We cannot allow Listen, if Elijah needed to be reminded, you're not alone. There's 7,000 that have not bowed a knee. If, If a man of God on that level, the most noted prophet yep. of the Old Testament. Not your average dude. <laughs> if he needed, I mean, I mean, God put on a display for that guy. Earthquakes, fire, wind, ripping rocks asunder. That guy needed to be reminded. You're not alone. And you need an Elisha. And I don't care, as controversial as this may be, in this day that we're in, I don't care what public health says, what any government says. Every Elijah needs an Elisha. Isolation will kill you quicker than that virus will. Mm -hmm. We will be beyond the effects of this plague and still be dealing with the most deadly virus, which is isolation. <laughs>